Hi, this is Deborah Peters and welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. Today's topic is all about leadership. And there's a whole lot of information out there right now about servant leadership. So I'm gonna give you my take on how I view leadership coming from a perspective of human conditioning over time, over generations, over paradigms, and the shift that we're currently in now that we're in this new decade called the 2020s. So I have basically broken it down for simplicity's sake for this video between what I call top-down leadership and servant leadership. So let me give you my observations that I've picked up over the last 20 years traveling around the world, coaching all different sizes of companies in over 16 cultures in a wide variety of industries. And what I've gathered from that and taken away from that and observed, you know, after you deduce that down, there are certain commonalities and there are certain differences. So that's where I'm coming from. All right, so first of all, in this comparison, I would like to say that there's no right or wrong. So I'm not looking for the wrongness in either or. It's just simply taking a look at how we have evolved when it comes to human consciousness, human behavior, and then how we take that and we show up within our business life. Now, I firmly believe that we really have no separation between who we are as a human being and who we are as a business leader, team leader, company principal, um, whatever level of authority you're in. Who you're being with you and that relationship that you have with yourself is going to get projected into how you view the world. It'll be your world views and how you manage relationships that are external to you. So here we go. All right, so just some, you know, comparison. Again, it's, it's not a pros and cons, it's just making some pointers here based on this higher level of consciousness that we're all experiencing. And some people, frankly, are, are struggling to download and to figure out how to navigate it when it comes to the business world. So first of all, a top-down leadership type of environment typically comes from a command control. It's like we've got this pyramid. If I'm the CEO or, or the C-suite and I'm at the top, then you know your job below me at whatever level you're at is to keep serving the level that's above you. So that's pretty common. And in that control and command, it's like, we dictate to you and then you do. So the flip of that in a servant leadership type of environment is all about collaboration. Now, this has been demystified over the last 15 years where certain corporations that were very, how shall we say, uh, structured in a hierarchical way made a shift into a more collaborative approach and suddenly the real estate of the corner office or the primo parking stall didn't really have value anymore. In fact, it was more about being able to have a dialogue on the fly with leadership, maybe have lunch with them without there being this, this big deal about it and, and passing each other in the parking lot looking for a different stall every time. It wasn't about this assigned special premium kind of status, if you will. So collaboration really does foster a great deal more creativity, inspiration, contribution from the people that are part of your team. All right, the next thing is in a top-down leadership kind of environment, things are typically pretty restrictive. 
You've got to get permission. You have to jump through all these hoops. There's a, a ton of bureaucracy to, to get anything approved or to, to move anything along. I can tell you that when I first came out of college, I had a couple, like three different corporate jobs. And I just was so frustrated because I had, I mean, I could clearly see, even as the newbie walking into the environment, how things could be more efficient, but nobody wanted to hear from me because what did I know? I'm just the newbie, right? And they're the seasoned veterans. They have so much more experience, therefore they know more. And you know what? Sometimes in, usually in a servant leadership environment, that fresh set of eyes can truly bring ideas and solutions and possibility thinking and more heightened awareness to the table than those that have been steeped in it for a long time because you know we become like our environment and then that limits our capacity because as i've said in previous in previous videos you don't know what you don't know so everything that you think you know is all that you have access to and if that's all you have access to then the results that come from what you know that you know are limited it's in the expansive side of that where you 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 go beyond what you don't know and you start asking different questions that you actually discover that there's so much more outside of that box of what you think you already know all right so next is exclusive i was having a conversation recently with a uh, partner a jv partner who works for a company it's it's probably what maybe a mid-sized company and i asked the question what's the strategy for the year and his response was i don't know because the C-suite doesn't share the strategy. In fact, he's in an upper management role and he's basically in a command control situation. Do you think he's happy? No, totally miserable and looking for his next opportunity like crazy. So this is the kind of thing that gets rid of high quality people when you're not willing to be inclusive, which is the flip side, right? We've got the, we're excluding you to we're including you and we want your feedback because that helps us to grow. And then everyone benefits from that growth. Next is domination over. So we dominate the, the mindset, the functionality of our team based on following the rules and doing things a certain way. Now, sometimes doing things a certain way has positive effects, but I think that really runs its course quite quickly. So, you know, if you do things a certain way and you're getting positive results, then how can you elevate that? You know, again, it comes down to asking higher level questions. Asking questions is the key to expansion of anything. It's where we think we already know, we stop asking questions, we lose our curiosity, and then we limit ourselves from what else is possible, right? Um, so instead of domination over, it's actually more about being empowering, giving your people the range to own their power, and to bring all their skills and all their talent and all their gifts and all of their desire to create to the table. And that's a very different environment than the domination of, you gotta do it our way or, you know, it's our way or the highway kind of thing, all right? And competitive, in the top-down business model or leadership model, it's all about limited supply. It's about a competitive mindset. We're competing in the marketplace for our slice of the pie because there's only so many pieces of pie. Nothing could be further from the truth. 
And that's the flip side of a servant leadership style is instead of it being competitive, it's all about creativity. And again, that comes down to asking different questions or even asking questions at all. When you go into your meetings, when you, when you have your huddles, when you get with your management, when you bring your, your team together for your quarterly reviews, it's about asking questions and getting that contribution. Not being afraid to hear what people have to say that may be contrary to what the leadership thinks it should be. Next is top-down leadership is typically numbers driven. It's about the money. It's about the money for the bottom line, the top line, the, the board, the stake, the, the investors. It's, it's all about the money. And what gets lost in that is the humanity. And I believe that as soon as you start to lose humanity in an organization, or, or maybe, you know, as soon as you start to focus on the, the numbers only, the humanity side of it is lost. And then people don't want to be there. Why would you want a bunch of drones working for you? You want to have people that are engaging and inspiring and, and enthusiastic to, to be a part of something great. And everyone is pulling together to create that. So the flip side of that is it's values driven and really digging deep and looking at what are the values that drive this organization and then are we living by that because therein lies the difference from a numbers driven culture to a values driven culture so typically in a numbers driven culture in a top-down leadership style it's not the CEO that's running the company, it's the CFO. And their job is just all about crunching numbers. Over here on the values driven side, it is about everyone coming together. And how are your personal goals and life fulfillment getting met through your engagement and contribution to the growth of this company? Because after all, we spend a large part of our day working. And this idea that you spend, you know, 50 weeks out of the year planning a vacation and then you take two weeks off that, and that you hate to come back from because you're going back to work doesn't, doesn't empower anyone. It doesn't make anyone happy. There's no joy in that. So therein lies the difference. Now, Next is efforting. So in a top-down leadership model that's typically numbers driven, it's about putting out more effort. Push more, grind more, do more, work longer. And you know, at the end of the day, it just sucks the life out of people. Because there's just no, when people are always seeking work-life balance, the, there's this like red alarm, you know, that goes off in my head that tells me so much about the culture of the organization that they're in. Because if you're constantly seeking work-life balance, then there's something off about the organization that you're in. I have a whole video on work-life balance, which you can tap into. Um, so with that then is, well, what's the flip side? Servant leadership is about being guided. I did a video recently on how to tune into your business, how to create a relationship with your business and to actually ask your business what it would like to become. Because a business starts to take on a life of its own. A team takes on a life of its own, a division, a region, this energy guides you as to how to keep growing and building the organization with the least effort. And I don't mean you have, don't have to do anything, but I mean, you don't have to push. You don't have to push against anything. The other guy, the market, the, the, the limited piece of pie, like it just takes all of that struggle out of the equation. Next is choke points. 
So top-down leadership is always focusing on what's wrong. Why isn't this working? Why aren't we getting what we want? Why isn't the growth there? And to my awareness of how the universe expands and, and how human behavior thrives, when you ask what's wrong with something, you always get more of the wrongness. So instead, on a, on a servant leadership style, what we're looking at is possibilities. What else is possible? What haven't we thought of yet? Or what have we thought of that we haven't implemented? Or how else could we approach this? Or what could we bring into the mix that would enable us to expand this? Who could we collaborate with? Who are our key partners? <laughs> Are our key activities in alignment? What are our KPIs? Have we measured them? And do we, do we look at those metrics to understand where to best put our talent, where to best put our energy, where to best put our focus? Next on my list is um, the, the benefit of a few. So in top-down leadership, it's about making this finite group of people happy because it's numbers driven rather than the benefit of all. So I'd like to predict that as we roll through this decade, what I'm seeing is that small business is really where it's at. Because small business really, first of all, I believe small business is the backbone of the American economy, of the North American economy. And because I travel extensively and I've done work all over the world in four continents, I'm seeing that other markets that were very much system oriented, nine to five, punch the clock kind of corporate environment is shifted into a more entrepreneurial based model. And so therefore, what we're seeing is that this whole uh, benefit of all existential kind of thinking system and i'll do a video on thinking systems in this q1 i've got it already um, queued up for everybody is really making a difference in the happiness the fulfillment um, the joy of going to work of being able to contribute and create something great with others that benefits others so next is the wrongness of things. And I kind of covered that off earlier, but when we're looking at what's wrong, then we can't play off of what works. And so I'm that kind of business coach where a lot of consultants will go into a company and they'll be asking the question, what's not working? Let's create a fix. I don't do that. It's not my approach. It never has been. And I, frankly, I don't find that it works. I think it actually creates a stall because whatever you focus on expands. So when I go into an organization, I do an assessment on what's working. And then I look at how we can expand that, how we can leverage that, and how we can take that to the next level. And that typically consumes whatever's not working and suddenly what's not working either gets out of the way or it transforms and if there's any sort of remnants left over then we can tidy those up with a shift with another shift right so just before i wrap this up because i have one more to offer thank you so much for subscribing and liking and sharing i really am so blessed to be able to do this. I get to get up every day and do what I absolutely love. And I would really appreciate knowing how this is impacting your business, your team, your life, your money, and your relationships and you know, your health because health is wealth. So hit the thumbs up, definitely subscribe. And if you're so inclined, share this with your team and your tribe. All right, and one more is resistance energy. So what's resistance energy? I talked a little bit about that in a previous video. Resistance energy is when 
you want something, but then you find all the reasons that you can't have it. You want a goal, but then you look at all the reasons or, or blocks to why it can't come. You, you have um, an insight or a desire to create larger numbers for your team, but then you start looking outside of that and you look at the market or you look at the economy or you look at the political climate and you say, oh, we can't do that because these things aren't working. So the flip side of that is about flow. And it really does come down to mindset. Possibility thinking, inclusion, expecting to win, getting into alignment every day before you head into the office and tune into the outer world, taking care of your body, taking care of your mind, having people around you that are supportive and loving and also that are going for it too, that are really shifting themselves constantly because they know that they can always be more and being more is the key to having more and doing more. So there is my observation and awareness based on my experience of the difference between top-down leadership and servant leadership. I hope this has served you and I would love to know more about what your business is about. I'm going to put a link to my business accelerator assessment and it's about a seven minute long assessment. It's really quick. It'll completely open your mind and be a great thought provoker to what your firm could do to be more effective and more efficient. And I'll also put a link to my schedule. If you would like, you can calendar some time with me and we can talk about the assessment results once they come in. So thank you so much. This is Deborah Peters. This is the Deborah Peters Show. And I look forward to seeing you again. Ciao.